Whenever the issue of uniform civil code in India arises, there is strong opposition by the Muslims of India. They want strict law for themselves. After all, why are the Muslims of India so afraid of the uniform civil code? There are many aspects of it, but today I will talk about polygamy, or if I say it in English, it is polygamy in simple language. Under the Sharia law, a Muslim man is allowed to marry more than one person, and this is naturally acceptable among the Muslims all over the world. Is polygamy has historically been prevalent in different communities around the world. Some societies and nations have constitutionally prohibited it, while some democratic and Islamic states have allowed it to be maintained. In this video I will talk about the history, operational and constitutional context of polygamy so that you can understand in what way is this practice fair or unfair. Polygamy is permitted in the scriptures of Islam and Hinduism. From mythological point of view, it has not been confirmed. A man could have multiple wives and could do so officially. History is full of examples of this. The practice of polyandry has also existed in many societies where a woman could have multiple husbands. But in both these types of trends, the main thing was male-dominated authoritarian society. If we talk worldwide, polygamy is more widespread in Africa than in any other continent. Many scholars have attributed the high prevalence of polygamy in Africa, especially in West Africa, to slavery because it led to an imbalance in the sex ratio. That is, if the number of women became more than that of men, then polygamy became stronger, and the most common argument given in favor of polygamy is that the number of women was more in those times. Therefore, to have a secure and better life, men had to marry multiple times. Anthropologist Jai Goody, in his worldwide comparative study, has found historical links between much of the horticultural shift and the practice of polygamy in African societies. In some sparsely populated areas where shifting cultivation takes place in Africa, women do the majority of the work. Polygamy is more prevalent here because men can monopolize women's labor. There was no prohibition against polygamy in ancient India, and it was common among the nobles and kings. For example, Bhupendra Singh of Patiala and Fateh Singh of Udaipur and Mewar, and some wealthy individuals, for example Ramakrishna Dalmia, Gajanan Birla, and P. Rajagopal, had many wives. The British in India allowed having multiple wives in Islamic provinces. However, this is not an old thing. When Maharaja Ranjit Singh was cremated in Lahore, his four wives and accompanying concubines were subjected to sati. His monuments still exist today. In Islam, a man is allowed to have four wives. This is mentioned in many verses of the Quran, whereas a woman is not allowed to have more than one wife. However, if her husband dies, she can remarry, otherwise not. But if a non-Muslim woman leaves her non-Muslim husband and marries a Muslim, then this marriage will be considered valid. There is no need to divorce your ex-husband. It is believed that Muhammad married 11 other women after the death of his wife Khadija. Even though this number was limited to four in Islam, Muhammad had 11 wives at the same time. Now let's talk about what is the perspective about polygamy in Hindu religion. Polygamy is permitted in Hindu religious texts, and there is evidence of kings having multiple queens in mythological texts like Mahabharata and Ramayana. Sri Ram's father Dasharatha had three wives. Sri Krishna also had many queens, and there were many great men who had more than one wife. According to Vishnu Purana, who can have how many wives? It is associated with knowledge which states that a Brahmin who is high in knowledge can have many wives. A Kshatriya, who is expert in the art of war, can have three wives. There is poison that if a businessman is top in knowledge, then he can have two wives, whereas a Shudra, who has knowledge of cleanliness, can keep one wife. The permission of number of wives based on knowledge is also implicit in Baudhayana Dharma Sutra and Dharma Sutra. So, it can be said that according to many communities of the world, the practice of polygamy has been common among Hindus and Muslims, and its permission is mainly found in these religious scriptures. Now, let's talk about what the law says. In 2000, the United Nations Human Rights Committee described polygamy as a violation of international law and expressed concern that polygamy violates the dignity of women 
and said it should be outlawed. If we look around the world, except the Islamic countries, polygamy is prohibited in most of the big countries, which includes many countries including Canada, Russia, and America. If we talk about India, then polygamy in India is illegal for people of all religions except Muslims, meaning in India only Muslim men have the legal validity of four marriages, whereas for everyone else it is a crime. Rather, such irony is not only in India. Even in Malaysia, Philippines, Singapore, polygamy is legal only for Muslims. Polygamy is legally recognized for Muslims in Nigeria and South Africa. Polygamy is not legal in Mauritius, but Muslim men can marry up to four women. They don't have any problem. Sections 494 and 495 of the 1860 IPC prohibit polygamy for Christians. The Hindu Code Bill was drafted in 1955, which prohibited the marriage of a Hindu whose spouse was still alive. Thus, in 1956, polygamy became illegal in India itself. But except for Muslims, Muslims were allowed to follow their religious law, Shariat. As an exception, permission to have more wives has been given in states like Goa. Now the question comes that why are you against polygamy? Whenever it comes to making uniform civil code, i.e. one law for all, there is huge opposition by the Muslim community. Why is it done? I have told you one of the many reasons in this video, but the practice of polygamy increased in the male-dominated society, and as modern understanding developed, all communities started abandoning this practice with time. But the Muslim community remained adamant on maintaining its legal validity by calling it their religious matter. Although this is prevalent in some tribal areas and tribes of the country, but they cannot be compared with Muslims. In such a situation, it can be said that polygamy is not a religious issue, but it is directly playing with the dignity and respect of a woman, and it is a symbol of treating it like an object. This is gender discrimination. Because of this, a woman goes through mental and physical terror and pain throughout her life. Therefore, polygamy is a thorn in the side of protecting women's rights. It should be removed. There is no point in what Shariat law, Vedas and Puranas say. As the society is breaking the old shackles, it is very important to break this law. I hope you liked the video. So if you are watching this video on Facebook, then like the page. And if you are watching on YouTube, then please subscribe to the